Hello, my name is Stephen Curria, and I am uh, past master of Washington Lodge Number 3, and I am very happy to be able to be here today to share with you some of our interesting Masonic artifacts that we have within our lodge building here in Warren, Rhode Island. Uh, as you can see before me is a copy, is the charter that we were issued in 1798. Uh, what makes this particular charter so special is that it was the first charter to be issued by the Grand Lodge of Rhode Island. Uh, and in it, it lists Washington Lodge as Washington Lodge number one. But then further on in the wording, it lists us down as third from us, meaning that we would be third in seniority. So we're actually numbered two different ways on one charter. So for a time in the early 1800s, we were actually calling ourselves Washington Lodge number one, but then they straightened all the seniority and numbers out and we eventually became Washington Lodge number three, which we still are today. Uh, this charter uh, actually underwent a series of restorations uh, into its present state now, which is uh, hermetically sealed and perfectly preserved and cleaned. Uh, which was the cost of which was generously donated by uh, the estate of worshipful Bob Sinclair, who was the lodge historian prior to myself. Now, this particular charter has been around. Uh, it has been on quite an adventure, and the fact that it has survived this long is really astounding. Um, there was a time in United States history called the Anti-Masonic Period. And for a time in the 1820s and 1830s, the Freemasons became public enemy number one. There were people burning down lodge buildings. They were persecuting Freemasons. Uh, in fact, the Grand Lodge of Vermont basically ceased to exist at this point. And one of the surefire ways for people to destroy a Masonic lodge was to break in and destroy its charter. Because without a charter, a lodge cannot meet. So, one of the members of our lodge, his name was Seth Peck, and he would eventually become the Grand Master of the state of Rhode Island. He took our charter, this that you see here, this very one, brazed it into a copper box, and buried it at the bottom of the Warren River at low tide, where only he knew where it was located, to keep the charter safe. And then, once the anti-Masonic period eventually blew over and Freemasons were again given the green light in the public eye, the lodge had the charter restored from its box and put back into our archives. And then again, at another point in its history, just before the hurricane of 1938, this charter was stored at the Old Stone Bank building in Providence on Main Street and it was st stored in their vault on a shelf. Now, during the hurricane of 38, the water in Providence and also in Warren, as a matter of fact, there was an oyster boat that floated right up Baker Street and ended up landing on Main Street about 200 yards to the west. Uh, the water rose so high that it actually flooded the bank vault and the water rose to the very level that the charter was stored at and it actually left a streak on the charter that was a little discolored from the salt water, which you actually can't see now because of the cleaning. Uh, but the conservator did confirm to us that this charter, what the leather that it is made out of, was actually exposed to salt water. So the, it was confirmed. Um, the discoloration that you can see is actually from the scroll that it was stored on which was a leather wrapping that was basically uh, a backing for it to give it support on a wooden scroll which was kept in a silver tube. Unfortunately, over the years, the blue dye in the leather eventually leached out and stained the leather of the charter and left us with this half color of darkish blue versus the lightish white. And also, unfortunately, the tannins in the leather ate away at the coloration of the original seal of the Grand Lodge of the state of Rhode Island, which would have appeared up here in the corner. So there's actually, unfortunately, nothing left. Uh, there were also some wax seals that unfortunately 
became lost over time. And you can actually see the remnants of the red dye of some of the wax here. Uh, that is, uh, that's the story on our charter. And this is uh, probably one of the grandest documents that you'll ever find in the state of Rhode Island. Thank you very much for listening.